seeking out that I repent and make me one of your hired servants. Lord of mercy, 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 Lord of mercy. Lord of mercy, 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 Lord of mercy. O you who at all times and places are worshipped and glorified, both in heaven and on earth, Christ our long suffering, generous in mercy, and rich in compassion, loving to the just and merciful to the sinner, O you who call people to repentance through the promise of blessings to come, deign, O Lord, at this very hour to receive our supplications and to direct our lives in the way of your commandments. Sanctify our souls, purify our bodies, set our minds aright, cleanse our thoughts, deliver us from any affliction or act danger and need. Surround us with your holy angels, so that, guided and guarded in their camp, we may reach the oneness of the faith and the knowledge of your unutterable glory. O oh, you who are blessed forever and ever, Amen. Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and forever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. More honorable than the cherubim, and beyond compare, more glorious than the seraphim, who without corruption did give birth to God the Word. The very Theotokos you do eat, magnify. Give the blessing, Father, in the name of the Lord. May God be merciful to us and bless us. May he cause his countenance to shine upon us. And have mercy on us. Amen. O oh God, Lord of powers and maker of the whole creation, O oh you who near compassion beyond understanding, gave your son down your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, for the salvation of our enemies, who through his cross canceled the debt of our sins and overcame the powers and masters of darkness and running on the of mankind. Accept from us sinners these prayers and thank you for the petition, and preserve us against many deadly falls in the darkness and against every enemy, seen in our kingdom or deceit in our hearts. Hear us our flesh with the fear of him, so that looking on you in all times and gathered by the light of science and reason, we may be able to unapproachable to eternal life and unceasingly to turn to you, eternal Father, and to your only begotten Son, and your all holy, good, and life giving Spirit, our thanksgiving and worship, both now and ever, and ever. <coughs> Amen. 
Now and always. 
Christ our God, glory to you. 
silencing the teachers by the word of God, which is above the wisdom of the wise. O pure mother of God, cease not seeking your children who are lost, that we may treasure Christ in our hearts and find the eternally our Father's house. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. In my foolish wretchedness I ran away from your glory, and I squandered wickedly the riches you have given me. And so now like the prodigal son I cry out to you, I have sinned in your sight, merciful Father. Receive me now that I repent and make me as one of your hired servants. Both now and forever and unto the ages of ages, amen. Thou faithful help of Christians, unswerving mediatrix in the presence of the Creator, do not overlook the prayerful voices of sinners, but hasten in thy goodness to our aid who trustingly cry to thee. Make haste in prayer and be diligent for our salvation. O Mother of God, ever protecting those who honor thee. For holy are you, our God. To you do we offer up glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, both now and forever. And unto the ages of ages.
by anything. Food is meant for the stomach, and the stomach for food, and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is not meant for immortality. For immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body, and God raised the Lord, and will also raise us up by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I therefore take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that he who joins himself to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For as it is written, the two shall become one flesh. That he who is united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun immorality. Every other sin which a man commits is outside the body, but the immoral man sins against his own body. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God? You are not your own. You were bought with a great price. So glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which belong to God. Will you stay with you, read the Holy Spirit? Hallelujah. 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 himself with the pods 
The pigs were eating, but no one offered to give them to him. But when he had come to his senses, he said, How many hired men in my father's house have bread in abundance, while I am perishing with hunger? I will get up and go to my father, and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me as one of your hired men. and was moved with compassion, and ran, and fell upon his neck, and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven, and before you, I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Fetch quickly the best robe and put it on him and give him a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet and bring out the fattened calf and kill it and let us eat and make merry because this my son was dead and has come to life again he was lost and is found and they began to make merry. Now his elder son was in the field, and as he came close to the house, he heard music and dancing. And calling one of the servants, he asked what this meant. And he said to him, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fattened calf, because he has got him back safe. But he was angered and would not go in. His father therefore came out and began to beg him. But he answered and said to his father, Look, these many years I have been serving you, Never once have I disobeyed any of your orders, and yet you have never given me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. But when this son of yours comes, who has devoured your wealth with prostitutes, you have killed for him the fattened calf. But he said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we were bound to make merry and rejoice, for this your brother was dead and has come to life. He was lost and he chubby Ukrainian serving in the holy place today. My name is Father Stephen, or Hef Stefan in Ukrainian, Father Stefan Tritsinyak. And I stand before you as a prodigal of sorts in myself. I embody this gospel in a very specific way in my own life. I only recently reverted back to the Byzantine Catholic Church in the Ukrainian Catholic Eparchy of Chicago. Having broken communion with the church, I was raised as a Greek Catholic and uh, ended up leaving about 23 years ago and uh, joined myself to the Orthodox Church in America. 
and only recently returned, so I stand among you as the least of the brothers, as a repentant person who desired nothing more than just being back in communion uh, with the one holy Catholic and apostolic church and my home in the Ukrainian Catholic Eparchy of Chicago. So it's only, I've only served a few times since coming back and I have to, I'm reminded, you know, priests are sometimes interchangeable, we're kind of a dime a dozen, but a good deacon is worth his weight in gold. Because they really do, uh, you know, there's variances in practice and things like that. So Father Paisi is keeping me on the straight and narrow to make sure I conform to the usage of the house, which is a real big blessing for me. So today we have this wonderful gospel, this parable from St. Luke given to us in this time of the Triodian. We've entered this time of the book of the season of repentance. Uh, and it's a time to begin to reflect more seriously on our spiritual lives. And I'm so grateful to be able to come to a monastery. What a gift it is that you have to be able to come and to join in the monastic community in the worship of God this morning. Uh, the monasteries, uh, my, my original mentor was Father Boniface Loikes of uh, Holy Transfiguration Monastery in California. And he said, monasteries are factories of grace. The, it's essentially a place of spiritual battle. And it's a good reminder for us as we're entering into this time of preparation for the fast. The church is merciful and prepares us so that we just don't jump in with both feet because we wouldn't be as successful spiritually had the, the church just sort of not open our heart gently and mercifully to this message of repentance. So as we reflect on today's gospel, we think about a couple of things. I would just offer you some points for your reflection, for your contemplation. One is indeed this idea of context. So we have a Lucan parable, that's the biblical context. And St. Luke, uh, being a, a, a good Orthodox uh, apostle and evangelist, structures many of his parables in a triadic way. There's often three characters. And today we have that, right? Well, who are the three characters that we have today? In today's parable? Huh? Father and the two sons. Father and the two sons, right? And the father is very much representative of God in the parable. And that happens sometimes in, Luke and, in Luke's uh, uh, parables, is that sometimes the character in one is either Christ or is God the Father? And in this case, the Father, in the parable, very much represents the mercy and compassion of God the Father. So that's one of the contexts. I've alluded to the other context of its position in one of these preparatory Sundays for the fast. And we'll hear this over and over again. But the liturgical motif is one of exile and return. Right? So the young son takes his inheritance, he takes the money and runs. But where does he run? Do you remember how the gospel phrases it? Do you remember? He goes into a far country. Right? A far country. That's a place far from God. A place far from the Holy One of Israel. A place where they're raising pigs and unclean animals. So he's exiled by his choices. He moves far from God. And isn't that characteristic in our own spiritual lives? When we've sinned, sometimes we run far from God and our hearts become hardened. And sometimes we even need to bottom out. I think of patterns like addiction, right? Where you have to bottom out before you begin to return. So this idea of exile and return is a liturgical theme, a motif. But it's our salvation. So it's not just an idle academic idea, right? This idea of being in a far country. What were to happen to us if we died in a faraway country far from God? If we did not have the opportunity to repent? We leave that up to God's mercy. 
But the church invites us in mercy to really examine our lives during this season to see that we don't stay in that land far away from God, but that we return. And you'll hear that again, right? In the, the Sunday of the last judgment of people who are separated. So this is serious stuff. When I was coming back into communion with the church, I met with Bishop Benedict of the Ukrainian Catholic Eparchy and the College of Consultors. And they didn't ask me questions about my background. The bishop, who's a monk himself, he's a Studite monk, he said, explain to us your salvation. How would you answer a question like that? Right? Explain to us your salvation. So we're penitents together on the way. That's the gift of being together in a monastic community. I don't like the language of states and life in the Western church, because that somehow separates us, right? In the Eastern church, we're all part of this battle together. We're all part of one army. And I love coming to monasteries, because sometimes <coughs> those are the frontline troops in the battle. So we learn a lot from them. Where does the battle occur for many of us, but in our spiritual mind? Our minds so easily wander into that far land, far from God. And that's why it's the practices in the monastery, the focus on the liturgical worship of the church, and especially the prayer of the heart, the Jesus prayer, that heals our noose, our spiritual mind, and helps us to stay focused on the most important thing, which is Christ, the most holy trinity and the kingdom of God. But it's so easy. I was just reflecting as I, as I was driving. Apparently God has a plan for me because I was appointed a, a parochial administrator in Munster, Indiana. I live in Kenosha, Wisconsin, and I was called to serve here today. So I have to travel at least two hours to go to church, wherever I go, either south to Munster now or when I'm coming up here. And so I was reflecting on that as I was driving here this morning. I went to confession yesterday, and yes, priests go to confession too. And what a gift confession is. So I was just thanking God for being kind of squeaky clean again, right? Being transformed again by his mercy and by his grace. And I was rejoicing, and then 10 minutes down the road, I'm thinking about grocery lists and consumer goods I want to acquire, and how easily, right, our minds can wander into that far land. So it's important for us to practice the prayer of the heart. And so this is a good place to come and to learn that. So that with every breath we take, we focus again on Christ and his mercy and calling out in our own brokenness, our own woundedness, for that healing balm of his mercy in our lives. So that's the context of today's gospel. There's also the two characters of the two sons, and they're very different from one another, aren't they? I work in the hospital as a hospital chaplain in Elkhorn, Wisconsin, and I encounter dysfunctional families all the time. And when somebody doesn't know what to do with a dysfunctional family, they call the chaplain. I guess we were the specialists in that regard. And so this idea of people fighting over money and inheritance, I mean, there's all kinds of details you can get into just of how a slight that was for a younger brother to ask for his inheritance. That's as if to say to his father, I don't care if you're alive or dead. Show me the money. I want to go. That's pretty much the message he was conveying. And in the ancient world, how was inheritance distributed? It was done in two fashions. Either the eldest received the whole kit and caboodle. They got all of the money, and then they would step into that role of the father, the pater familias, the father of the family. And then they would be to distribute that wealth according to the needs of the family members in the household. And then later, there was a second development that the sons received equal portions, but there was an extra portion set aside, and the eldest got a double portion. So it was either one or the other of those 
ways of distributing. So you can kind of realize the older brother's resentment, right? Here's this young whippersnapper asking for the, for the inheritance. He doesn't care if our father lives or dies. And I'm the faithful one. I'm always around. I'm always helping out around here. And I come around the house, and there's a big party going on. And it's because, you know, that son of a gun came back. And they're celebrating that. So you can kind of feel the disconnect there, right, in the text. And so the father, in his mercy, comes out and explains the situation. But I was thinking, you know, we know people like that, right? We know people who kind of will o' the wisps, they kind of run with the, the, the wind and maybe don't make good choices. And then we know good, solid citizens, these faithful ones that you can always count on, that are always reliable. And so one of the spiritual questions for our contemplation today is which one am I? Which brother most resembles my life? And especially my spiritual life. Am I faithful day in and day out? Do I stick to my rule of prayer? Do I honor our Heavenly Father with divine worship on a regular basis? Or am I stuck in that faraway land? And then ultimately, I think we're left to contemplate the compassion of the Father. It always strikes me. I can't read that text or hear that text proclaimed without it bringing tears to my eyes thinking about the Father scanning the horizon for the return of his beloved Son. And who is that? That's each and every one of us. Right? The Father anxiously, not anxious because he's, he's incarnate, but he intently it, seeks us out. You know, this place is dedicated to the searcher of the lost, the most holy mother of God, interceding for those who are lost and need to be returned to the bosom of the Father. One of the most beautiful icons for this feast that I found is just a little print, and it's in the uh, publican prayer book from Saint so from Sophia Press that the Melkites had put out. It's the third edition, I think, that they added that little icon. But it's the Father and the Son in an embrace of return. And if you have that prayer book, I encourage you to look at that icon and to contemplate it, and to contemplate its meaning for your life, of what it means to be in that kind of communion, that kind of deep, intimate, spiritual communion with the creator of the universe who created you, who wants you, who loves you, who desires you to be in that kind of relationship with him. And these things are grave matters. You know, the bishop asking me to explain my salvation. These are literally matters of life and death. And in our uh, culture, we lose sight of that. That our spiritual destiny uh, is a matter of grave importance. And we're blessed as Eastern Christians to have the gift of Great Lent each and every year to remind us of these sobering spiritual realities so that we can humble ourselves, maybe through bodily discipline, through fasting, through prayer, uh, through prostrations, which I need to do lots of. <laughs> Every time I go visit the Ukrainians now in Munster, they give me three dozen pierogi. And I'm looking, starting to look like a pierogi, a big potato dumpling. So I'm looking forward to those prostrations because they're good for body as well as soul. So we take this invitation to heart and, uh, and we ask for grace because we can't do it on our own. So we turn to the Lord. And especially today as we pray the Lord's Prayer during this divine liturgy, just think about that image of the Father who desires to be in intimate communion with us as his unworthy children. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Glory to Jesus Christ.
faith and for the orthodox everywhere, especially the servants of God, Catherine, Jane, Betty, Susan, Patricia, Jeff, Mallory, Pauline, and for all the departed and scribed in this monastery, sit this, that they may be pardoned of all their offenses, both voluntary and involuntary. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Those who pray for those who bring offerings, those who care for the beauty of this holy and venerable house, for those who labor and have service, for those who sing, and for the people here present who await your great and rich mercy. Lord, have mercy.
His Holiness Francis, the Pope of Rome, our Father and Archbishop Lucian, our God-loving Bishop John Michael, the priests, monastics, deacons in Christ, and every order of the clergy, may the Lord God remember in his kingdom always, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. For the President of these United States and all in civil authority, may the Lord God remember in his kingdom always, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Amen. Founders, benefactors, and beautifiers of this holy temple, may the Lord God remember in his kingdom always, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. For the sick and the suffering, for those who have no one to pray for them, the homeless and hungry in our community, and the homebound in our monastic community. May the Lord God remember in his kingdom always, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. For those who have fallen asleep in the faith of Christ, especially for all those whom we have commemorated and all those dear to our, to us. May the Lord God remember in his kingdom always, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. For all the Slavic, Christian, Mikhail, Pomina, Hospod, Vlog, Tsarsky, Svoye, Zaujani, Bosha, Tsars, Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before. 
Yahweh, true God of true God, begotten, not made, of the one essence of the Father, by whom all things were made, who across men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man. He was crucified also for us, suffered under Pontius Pilate, and was buried. The third day he rose again, according to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, of whose kingdom there shall be no end. And in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who is together with the Father and the Son, who is glory and glorified, who is spoke by the prophets, and in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. I expect the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us turn to let us turn to this call, let us attend, that he may offer the holy oblations in peace. The mercy of peace, the sacrifice of praise. Give the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ to all of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with thy spirit.
part take thereof unto the awakening of the soul unto the forgiveness of their sins unto the imparting of the Holy Spirit unto the attainment of the heavenly kingdom unto complete trust in you but not unto judgment but condemnation Again, we bring you this rational service for those who have fallen asleep in the faith, ancestors, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, teachers, and for every righteous spirit who has fallen asleep in the faith, especially for our most holy, most pure, most blessed, glorious lady, mother of God and ever virgin Mary. It is
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and always, and unto ages of ages. Amen. And with thy spirit, bow your heads unto the Lord, unto the Lord. Most of God is at peace. For they have bowed not the flesh and blood, but you, the God before whom we stand in awe, make smooth then our path for our good, Master. Through what lies before us, according to the need of you, sail with those who sail, journey with those who journey. Heal the sick, for you are the physician of our souls and bodies. Through the grace and compassion and love towards mankind, your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your all holy, good, and life giving spirit, now and forever into the ages of ages.
Strengthen us. 
sanctify those who love the beauty of your house. Glorify them, return by your divine power, and do not forsake us who hope in you. Give peace to your world, to your churches, to the priests, to our government, and to all your people. For every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from you, the Father of lights. And to you we give glory, thanksgiving, and worship to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Blessed be the holy name of the Lord, and forth and forever. Blessed be the holy name of the Lord, and forth and forever. Blessed be the holy name of the Lord, and forth and forever. The blessing of the Lord be upon you by his grace and love for mankind at all times, now and ever. And unto ages of age, oh. Amen. Glory to you, O Christ, our God, and our whole glory to you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and always, and forever and ever. Amen. Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Father bless. May he who rose from the dead, Christ our true God, to the prayers of his all pure, and all Holy Mother, patroness of this holy temple, by the power of the precious and life-giving cross, through the protection of the honored, fatherless powers of heaven, through the intercessions of the honored, glorious prophet, forerunner, and Baptist John, of the holy, glorious, and all-praised apostles, of the holy, glorious, and triumphant martyrs of our venerable and God-bearing fathers and mothers, who have shone forth in the ascetic life, of our Father among the saints, John Chrysostom, Archbishop of Constantinople, whose liturgy we have celebrated this day, of the holy and righteous forebears of God, Joachim and Anna, of the holy martyrs, Pamphilius, and his companion, the deacon Valens, and their companions with them, whose memory we keep today, and of all the saints, have mercy on us and save us, for he is good and loves Mankind. Amen. the prayers of our Holy Fathers, O Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us. Amen. Glory to you, Lord God, glory to you, Lord God, glory to you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord my God, that you have not rejected me as an answer. I thank you, the divine medium, worthy, worthy to partake of your immaculate heavenly gift, to the master who loved mankind, who died for us in order to be peaceful upon us, these your awesome life giving mystery, for the good and sanctification of our souls and bodies, grant that they may be for me also and for you, of soul and body, to the adverting or every adversary, to the enlightenment of the eyes of my heart. To the peace of my spiritual parts, to gift invincible to love and fame, to the fulfilling of wisdom, through the keeping of your commandments, to grow in your divine grace and the attainment of your kingdom, that by them preserved in your holiness, I may ever remember your grace and henceforth live not for myself, but to you, our master and benefactor. And thus, when this life is ended in the hope of eternal life, I may attain to everlasting rest where the horse of those who keep festival is unceasing, and the delight of those who behold the ineffable beauty of your countenance is spotless. For you are the true desire and honorable joy of all those who love you, O Christ our God, and all creation hymns you forever. Amen. Master Christ our God, King of the ages and maker of all things, I thank you for all the good things which you have bestowed upon me, and for this partaking of your immaculate and life giving mysteries. Wherefore I pray you, O our good and love mankind, keeping me under your protection and in the shadow of your wings, and grant to me with a pure conscience and even to my last breath, to partake of your holy mysteries, to remission of sins and to life everlasting. For you are the bread of life, the fountain of holiness, the giver of good things, and to you do we ascribe glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and forever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. O you who willingly gave your flesh to me as food, O you who are a fire consuming the unworthy, 
Consume me now, O my Creator, but rather enter into all of my body, into all my joints, my veins, my heart. Turn the thorns of my transgressions, cleanse my soul and hollow my thoughts. Make firm my knees and my bones, and light was one of my five senses. Establish me wholly in your fear. Ever shelter me and guard me, and keep me from every soul, corrupt deed and word. Cleanse me, purify me, control me, adore me, teach me and enlighten me. Show me to be a tabernacle of your spirit, O me and away, the dwelling place of sin. Let from me your habitation to the entrance of your communion. Every, every, every evil deed and every passion may flee us from fire. As intercessors, I bring to you all the saints, both the angelic leaders of the bodiless powers, your forerunner and your wise apostles, and besides these, your immaculate and all pure mother. Accept their prayers, my Christ, who are compassionate and make your servant to be a child of the light. For you alone, good Lord of the sanctification and splendor of our soul. And to you as God and Master, day by day, it is due to be ascribed glory. May your holy body, O Lord Jesus Christ, our God, be to me for life eternal. And your precious blood to remission of my sins. May this Eucharist be to me for joy, health, and gladness. And your awesome and second coming, make me a sinner, worthy to stand at the right hand of your glory. To the intercession of your Almighty Mother of all your sins. Amen. O oh, Holy Lady, dear focus, light of my darkened soul, my hope, my shelter, my refuge, my consolation, and my joy. I thank you that you have appointed me worthy of the one worthy to be a partaker of the immaculate body and precious blood of your Son. For to you who give birth to the true light and lightning the light eyes of my heart, to you who bore the point of immortality, enliven me who lie dead in sin. O oh, compassionate Mother, the merciful God, have mercy and grant me humility and contrition of heart and meekness of my thoughts and deliverance from the bondage of my vain imaginings and appoint me worthy even to my last breath to receive without condemnation the sanctification of the immaculate mysteries to the hidden of both soul and body and grant me tears of repentance and confession that I may hymn you and glorify you all the days of my life for bless and glorify you to all ages amen for bless and glorify you to all ages amen for bless and glorify you to all ages amen now apart from my truth you believe your servant to go in peace according to your word for my eyes have your salvation have seen your salvation which you have prepared for all the people a light to the light of the Gentiles and to the glory of your people in Israel. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy and mortal one, and mercy in us. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy and mortal one, and mercy in us. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy and mortal one, and mercy in us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and forever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Almost holy to hear mercy in us, Lord, forgive us our sins, Master, pardon our iniquities. Holy one, look upon us, and heal our infirmities for thy name's sake. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and forever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. The Lord is with you, and the Father is glory, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. The grace which shone from your mouth like a torch of flame, enlightened the whole earth. It led up for the word.